Good morning to all. Good morning. And welcome to Wad 4. We're here for a very important dedication this morning. Uh, we're on a uh, street to where Wayne and his family lives, right down here. But before we do the unveiling of the sign, etc., I'm going to invite uh, Reverend Tony Branch up. He's a member of, actually, I think, chairman of the diversity commission. And he's going to give some welcoming remarks. And we have a little agenda here, people. But he's promised me it's 37 <laughs> min minutes of talking. So uh, there's also somebody taking action over the back on that. <laughs> so with no, no further ado, Reverend. <laughs> Well, God bless you and good morning. This is an occasion uh, that uh, has a meaning, different meaning to many of us. Uh, we, some of us are still in mourning with respect to Representative uh, McAllister, but we are here uh, because we love him and because of the love of God. If you believe that, give yourself a hand clap. Amen. I promised folks that I wouldn't make this into a religious service, so I'm going to behave myself. Amen. If, if, do you mind if we take a, a moment of prayer? I've asked the family if I could do that. And just give me one minute. If you could close your eyes and bow your heads and give God some reverence. Father God, in the name of the Jesus that I serve, we thank you for the assemblance of thy people in this place today. Lord, we are going to give homage to your angel, Wayne McAllister. Lord, we thank you for the presence that he had upon this earth and the work that he did. In your name, in the name of Christ, we pray. Those that believe in the redemption, please say amen. 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 All right, I said I'll be quick. At this time, I'm going to do opening remarks uh, with respect to why we're here. We're here at a street dedication because of a great man. He was a beloved son of the city of Brockton. He was a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a brother to his siblings. What are the adjectives that describe this man? Humble, humility, and honor. Now, what does that mean? He never sought credit for anything that he has done. Now, I need y'all to repeat for me this word. Never, never. see credit. See credit. Never. 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 See credit. See credit is our example. He had humility. Wayne never thought that he was important. He always thought that the beloved people of the city was important. He believed that the community was important. He believed that the students of Southeastern was important. He believed that the city of Brockton was important. If you believe that, give Wayne a hand clap. Now, we often use this word honor, but we don't really know the true meaning. Honor is a person that served with distinction, a person that served with dignity, an example to us all. Whether it was Wayne as vice president of the Brockton Fire Department Union Local 144, whether it was Wayne who was a member of the Crime and Drug Task Force, whether it was Wayne who was a member of the Brockton NAACP, whether it was Wayne who was a member and chair of the planning board of the city of Brockton, or whether it was Wayne who was a member of the Southeastern Regional School Committee, this is a man to serve with distinction and honor. If you believe that, give Wayne a hand clap. Now, on a personal note, there's always some confusion when we talk about elected black officials. But it is important to know that he was the first elected African American to public office. But he never, he never talked about being a black elected official. He talked about being a community leader. He talked about the blood that he poured out for our community. If you believe that, give Wayne a hand clap. Yeah. Humble, humility, and honor are the adjectives in which you should describe this man to serve this city. Do you agree with that? Yes. Y'all yes. not talking back to me. Do you agree with that? Yes. yes. So what is the word? Humble. 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 Humility. Humility. And honor. And honor. Those are the characteristics of leadership that is required not only in this city, across this commonwealth, but across this nation. If you don't have that, you're not leading. Do you agree with me? Yes. Oh, somebody told me don't make it into a service. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I, went over, I went over my time. <laughs> so at this time, we are going to ask that the Honorable Bill Carpenter, Mayor of the City of Brockton, please give remarks. Welcome.
Lesson number one, never be the next speaker in the program after a Pentecostal minister. No matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be able to top that. Uh, it really is a distinction and honor to be part of this uh, ceremony this morning. I want to thank everyone who played any role in this honor for Wayne in any way. I want to particularly personally welcome the McAllister family here this morning. Uh, this is a really important day for our city. Um, Wayne, and I know others will talk about his various roles of service, but you know, Wayne was a man who uh, served his country, served his city, uh, served his community, loved his city, loved the children that grew up in this city, and fought and advocated for all, whether he was a uh, whether he was advocating for his brother and sister firefighters as a, as a vice president of Local 144, or he was fighting for the children of Brockton on the Southeastern Regional School Committee. And uh, I, I had the personal pleasure, I'd always been a casual friend of Wayne's, but during uh, my four years on the Brockton School Committee, Wayne was also serving on the Southeastern Regional School Committee, and we spent a lot of time talking during those years about Brockton kids. And we figured out real quickly that we both had a similar passion. At that time, you know, Wayne, of great concern to Wayne was um, the threats of violence and particularly violence uh, against young people of color growing up. I came to the school committee with a passion about the challenge of drug addiction in teenagers. And it didn't take us very long to figure out that we both had the same passion and that was at-risk kids growing up in the city of Brockton. All risks to all children growing up in the city of Brockton. And Wayne really took a great deal of responsibility of being the only member of color on that Southeastern Regional School Committee. He, he knew that he had a responsibility to advocate for the students of color at that school, but more importantly, more importantly, is he took a great responsibility on himself to advocate for the children of Brockton. And he fought for every child of the city of Brockton to get them the best education possible at Southeastern Regional. And uh, I, I, it, was, it was a great honor and a pleasure to have the chance to work with Wayne uh, over those years. And it was a very easy decision for me when I became mayor to ask Wayne to continue to serve as the chair of the planning board. I knew we had the right man already in place. There was no need to look at that position. So it's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm overwhelmed by the turnout of support for Wayne and his family in our city today. And uh, this is a great day for the city and I thank you all for being here. So I want you all to charge this to my mind, not to my heart. I look to the left of my, uh, my, my I saw it here and I see some great veterans and I think that we need to give homage uh, to the American flag so I'm going to step out of my uh, exactly <laughs> Bob's already put his hand there if Ariana if you could come up and lead us uh, in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag that would be great come on sweetie give my daughter Ariana Branch a little hand clap if you can where are you beautiful Right hand, flags there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. God bless you. Thank you all. At this time, I'm going to ask that City Councilor, the Honorable Paul Sedinsky, join us to give remarks. This could, let me be very clear, it was not only the work of the Diversity Commissioner, the Commission uh, Ali, as well as Vice Chair uh, Jacob Tagger, but Paul Stadinsky. Let it be clear, Paul Stadinsky put in the work to make sure that this day uh, came about. So can you all please welcome him with a hand clap, please? Thank you. Uh, the good reverend told me I've got two minutes because I have to make up some time for him. <laughs> you know, there's two other words, I, reverend, that, that I was out there. I listened to everything you said very well. And two things with Wayne. 
He was a man of total dignity, and he was a strong guy. He never complained. And I saw him just about every day of the week. In the early morning hours, would stop for coffee. He'd be down the whole store down here. It was Tedeschi's. It's 7-Eleven now. <laughs> and uh, he's just, uh, I, I knew him actually long before that. Uh, it's just a pleasure to see him, and he always had a smile. And uh, I, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get this through. And the weather was what held us up on getting this done, but we got a beautiful day today, and I want to thank the McAllister family and everybody. I thank you all, and I welcome you again to, uh, actually, welcome to the McAllister Way. You'll see a beautiful sign in a little bit, and the Ward Ford. Thank you all. Mark Lindy is the chairman of the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical School District and served many years with Wayne, knows him as a friend. If you guys can welcome Mark Lindy up here right now, give, give him a hand clap, just a few words. Good morning. It was my high honor and distinct privilege to serve alongside my friend and colleague, Wayne E. McAllister, for many years on the school committee. It is with very much honor to have been asked to speak today about Wayne on this wonderful occasion. Quite frankly, I would rather be sitting inside his home, as I did on many occasions, over coffee, solving the problems of the world and talking about everything in Brockton and the world around us. I truly wish I could have that moment again. When I think of my friend, many words come to mind. Courageous. Fearless. Humble. Smart unassuming, caring, and most of all kind. I miss him at every meeting of our school committee and especially before, during, and after every election season where he and I sat and analyzed and psychoanalyzed every election and every race. We agreed and we disagreed on the politics of the day, but it was, it was the most fun that I ever had. Wayne loved many things. First and foremost, his family, his beloved family, his friends who became his family, his community, his fire department, his school, Southeastern, family and community resources, and many, many people, a lot of whom are here today. When I think of Wayne, I think of great men like Nelson Mandela. Mandela said, it is better to lead from behind and to put others in front especially when you celebrate victory when nice things occur. You take the front line when there is danger, then people will appreciate your leadership. I think we all appreciated his leadership. Wayne's style was very quiet, very behind the scenes, and very carefully thought out. The picture that was posted on Facebook to promote this event with his glasses on the bridge of his nose <laughs> said it all. If he heard something he didn't like or wanted to ponder a bit, he would peer over those glasses and say, is that so? <laughs> this may mean disapproval or a suggestion that you may need to rethink your position. <laughs> a second Mandela quote says, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others. Wayne certainly made a difference when he stood up for others, children, battered women, or bullies that tried to force something on our community that we didn't want. Wayne was a tireless champion to anyone who tried to harm anybody else. Lastly, Wayne believed strongly in the power of a free public education that served everyone. As a proud union firefighter, he saw the value in education to lift people up. One of the things I'm pleased to do today, and we'll have another occasion for this, is to thank a family in Brockton, the Smith family, for starting the ball rolling to give scholarships to deserving students to continue their education. Wayne always talked to me about education being the great equalizer. My last quote, they're all from Mandela, symbolize Wayne. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. The education I received and he quietly taught 
changed my life forever, for which I am eternally grateful. I miss Wayne from the bottom of my heart, just like a member of my family. Both my parents are only children, and I had no aunts and uncles. Wayne was like an uncle to me. He was a mentor, he was my friend, and I miss him dearly. Godspeed, Wayne. Suffer no more, and rest in peace. Thank you. At this time, we're going to ask that uh, the president of our um, Firefighters Local 144, Archie Gormley, a, a great colleague and friend of Wayne, to join us, please. Thank you, Tony. Uh, I'm stuck with words. Wayne was that good of a person. You know, you could be here all day naming things and all that, but most of all to me, he was a friend. He was my brother. He accepted me as his brother. From the first day I got on the job, he was one of the first that I met. So to the, Wayne's family, I want to thank you for sharing him with us all those years. Uh, to his brothers, that are out here now on the fire service, thank you for being here. Chief Williams, thank you. Deputy Chief Nardelli, thank you. All you guys, this is Wayne, this is what he is, this is who he made us. It was a great part of it. I had the honor of working with him for years. I can't say enough about him, but if I stay up here much longer, I'm sure he's gonna hit me with something. Because <laughs> so, we don't like these ceremonies, and that's for sure. But Wayne, I love you, I miss you. You're my brother, you always will be. Thank you very much. At this time, I'm gonna ask uh, Dr. Uh, Lewis Lopes, the superintendent of Southeastern Regional uh, Vocational School. Thank you. Thanks, Tony. I wanna to talk to you today about opportunity. Uh, when I met May, uh, Wayne, we would always talk about Southeast and the opportunities that the school provided for young men and women. There was, a, there was a lot to like about Wayne, and one thing that I really appreciate was that he told it like it was. He looked around the school and said, what an opportunity these kids have to do something with themselves. All I have to do is take, take advantage of it. He would tell them, stop making excuses, stop feeling bad about yourself, get yourself educated, and take control and responsibility for yourself. No excuses. Wayne had no patience for whiners. I remember a time we were at a school committee meeting, the person was talking about all the reasons why something did not get done and all the issues the kids from Brockton had. He stopped the meeting and said, using those glasses, don't talk to me about the Brockton kids as if you know them. I know them and excuses are not helping them. Talk to them about opportunities, show them how they should act, educate them, we're not here to complain, we're here to make a difference. Well, he made a difference. And this street, now named in his honor, serves as a daily reminder of how we need to live our lives and how we need to make a difference. Like Wayne, I was not born an opportunity, I had to earn it. The McAllister way was not to sit in the back and complain or to sit in the back and wait for others to make decisions for you. The McAllister way is to lead, influence, and change from the front. Thank you. At this time, on the uh, behalf of the City of Brockton's City Council, I'm going to ask that President Robert Sullivan join us. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, on behalf of the Brockton City Council, and I'm joined by some of my colleagues, of course, Ward 4 Councilor for 12 years, and we wouldn't be here without Paul Stadinsky. Right. Uh, so thank you for being here, Paul. Um, Councilor Lodge, uh, Wynn Fowler was here as well. Thanks, Wynn. And both Councilor from Ward 6, Jack Lally, and Councilor from Ward 7, Shirley Azak, here. And Ian Borgard. Oh, and Councilor from Ward uh, 5, Ian Borgard, as well. Um, you know, when you think about Wayne McAllister and the McAllister family, uh, you think of a, a man that was um, a gentleman uh, at all times, uh, and he was also a gentleman. Uh, he was, without question, a champion within the city of champions. And it's clearly illustrated today on a Saturday morning in July when people could be at the beach, 
uh, hiking or in the woods. We chose to be here to honor a great man, and that speaks volumes to Wayne and, and the McAllister family. Uh, I think when you look at the definition of a public servant, it's someone that gives back to the community without question. At, at great, great um, uh, disadvantage to family life, uh, we do that, and Wayne was a great example of doing that, uh, to give back to, uh, to his home. Uh, he did it as a public servant, as a, as a dedicated uh, firefighter, as a father, a husband, brother, friend. And at the end of the day, uh, this sign will be here uh, for generations to come. And every time you drive by this, you're going to think of Wayne McAllister, the man, and what he did to the city of Brockton. So God bless him, God bless you, and God bless the McAllister family. Thank you. At this time, I know that um, Representative uh, Cronin had another engagement, but is Representative DuBois here? Cassidy and Mike Brady. Okay, so we'll, so Senator Mike Brady and um, uh, Representative Cassidy will give remarks for the Massachusetts delegation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, words cannot express what Wayne means to all of us in the city of Brockton. He was part of our family and part of the fabric of the community. And, and from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank the McAllister family who, for having us here today. This great honor to name the street after Wayne. My brother lived across the street from him several years ago. I know many neighbors that are good friends of ours still live in the neighborhood and some have moved on. But. Um, you know, even even when I first ran for representative, he was one of my earliest supporters, and we had two other great candidates running. So it was like three cousins running against each other. But Wayne was stepping up to support me, and I'm forever grateful because I would never be in the saddles without Wayne stepping up to supporting me, as well as Tom Kenny and many others here. But Wayne was one of the first and earliest supporters of mine, and, and he stood by me, and he's a brother to all of us here in Brockton. So from the bottom of my, my heart, we are forever grateful to Wayne and the McGoss family for having us and having him be a part of our family in Brockton. And I have a citation, and again, words cannot express and give justice to what Wayne meant to all of us in the city of Brockton, but this is to the family of Wayne McAllister. Can at least one of his family members, I know he's got a big family, so if somebody can come up here, we have a citation from the State House. And also that was mentioned, uh, Representative Cronin did have a family engagement. She's out of town. I do. Um, I believe that um, Representative Michelle Dubois is on her way. She had another commitment in another town, which I'm going to after we're trading off spaces. But this is to the family of Wayne McAllister in the naming of the Brockton Street in his honor and acknowledgement of his tremendous contributions to the city of champions. And Wayne was one of our true champions in the city of Brockton. So God bless you. Just a quick uh, comment. As I was looking up and seeing the uh, the uh, firefighters here, it just brings back a memory. I, uh, as a lot of people know, I used to work with uh, Tom Kennedy, and uh, uh, as I came in one day, Tommy was uh, wasn't really responsive for the most part. So, uh, um, you know, I called 911, and uh, of course the firefighters always show up. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, Wayne comes in. Tommy, Tommy, you all right? And uh, he was non-responsive. Puts the uh, um, oxygen on him, and uh, I can remember it just like this. Tommy just snapped right out. Wayne, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's room is probably like six by eight. Uh, thank goodness Archie didn't come in because uh, Archie's, you know, all the other firefighters were there. But uh, yeah, it was just they they started talking for like 45 minutes, and uh, it was just amazing. They were talking politics and. You know, the ambulance people are standing there. They're waiting to, uh, you know, take Tommy. Yeah. I'm like, come on, let's, let's go and uh, finish it up. So as Tommy was leaving on the stretcher, it uh, just occurred to me, Tommy's last words to her friends were, God love you. And uh, Wayne said back, God love you to you, Tommy. So a couple days later, Wayne calls and says, uh, you know, just checking on Tommy, seeing how he's doing. And uh, he had a couple other issues. Our uh, kid was trying to get his driver's license. You know, so we got that uh, uh, proceeded. And uh, about the schools, he was talking about the schools. And uh, Wayne was just that type of guy, you know. He, he was saying he was very quiet, but he got things done. 
you know, and that's the, that's the type of uh, person that uh, Wayne was. And as we drive by the street, we should always look at uh, his street and think uh, we should do something nice for everybody, you know, each day we drive by the street. So God love you, Wayne. Well, the hour or the minute has come for the street dedication, um, but I want to say again, or at least say, that we should give a hand clap to the family. For, for, let me tell you something. As a preacher, getting calls 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, people want prayer. It is important to know that families give their time. So can we give the family a big hand clap, please? And go. Yeah, she, but she's, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, after the, yes. Yeah. So the, the family is speaking, they'll do it right after the dedication. So at this time, the Honorable Bill Carpenter, the Honorable Paul Sedinsky, Representative Tony Branch of Southeastern, Representative Mark Lindy of Southeastern, and the family members may join us at the sign, please. Am I going to pull that down? Where is Brett at? You ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Oh, you brought the scissors. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Beautiful sign. Yes. Yes. At this time, we'll have the performance of taps. On behalf of the McAllister family, I would ask that Sarah, and if I say this wrong, Keho, Keo, join us for family remarks. God bless. Give her a hand clap. Thank you, everyone. Um, we would like to thank Mayor Carpenter, uh, Councilor Studensky, the members of the Brockton Diversity Commission, and of course the city of Brockton for making this possible. Uh, <clears throat> my father would have been deeply moved um, by this honor. Uh, he often shared with me and my siblings stories of his childhood growing up on Turner Street. He spoke of members of the community looking out for him and his brothers and sisters and making sure they stayed out of trouble. Uh, but most importantly, how growing up in Brockton afforded him them the opportunities that they might not have had elsewhere. Because of these positive experiences of his youth, it was important to him to give back to the Brockton community. My father joined the Brockton Fire Department in the 70s and served for over 30 years. And he became involved in the union and was elected the first black vice president to Local 144. He was extremely proud of his service to the department and the union, and he became, remained an active member until his retirement. My father's involvement in the firefighters union led to his love of politics. And everyone who knew my father knew how passionate he was about politics. Good luck to anyone willing to debate Wayne McAllister, okay? Because you'd likely lose. He's the first and only person I have ever met that carried a copy of Robert's Rules of Order in his briefcase. 
I'm sure he had it on hand at planning board and school committee meetings. Probably to the dismay of some. Um, but above all, my dad was a champion of education and it was of utmost importance that every child had access to a quality education. And he proudly served on the Southeastern Regional School Committee until his death. Uh, you know, when my family was notified about the possibility of a street being named in his honor, I, I have to admit that it was bittersweet. Uh, my initial reaction was sadness, but then I had a few laughs with my sister, knowing that had he been alive today to receive this honor, he would have called me and every single one of my siblings, my aunts, my uncles, and probably a few close friends and said, did you hear? <laughs> Wayne McAllister way? <clears throat> when, uh, when are you going to get a street named after you? <laughs> we all know it would have been his way of deflecting the embarrassment he would have felt to have such an honor bestowed upon him. Because nothing my father did was to advance politically or socially. He was sincere in his love for this community, his friends, and of course, his family. So on behalf of my father and the entire McAllister family, thank you so much for this extraordinary honor. Um, and just a side note, um, the McAllister family would like to invite everyone who's able to attend at, um, to George's Cafe um, at the conclusion of the ceremony for um, a light lunch. And we would like to thank the Tartaglia family for their generosity. So thank you very much. That was excellent. Give her another hand clap. Now, yeah, exactly. Now I challenge you. I challenge you today to be like Wayne. Are you ready to be challenged? Yes. Yes. Put up your right hand. All right, put up your hand so all of y'all. I do solemnly swear to be, to have humility, to be humble, and to honor my fellow man and woman. I agree from this day forward to do it the Wayne way. God bless you. Give yourself a hand clap. <laughs> now, y'all know I'm a preacher, so you swore to that. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. At this point, I was going to do closing remarks, but that's not appropriate. Uh, we are here because of Paul Sedinsky, and I'm going to ask that Paul closes out. Yes, Paul. I'm going to ask that Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask that Paul closes out remarks. And again, I want to thank you. I want to thank the family, the family, for giving us this great man. Let, let us give them a hand clap one more time, please. <laughs> Councilor Sedinsky. I want to thank everybody, in, in particular the family. Uh, and I know Wayne's looking at us today saying, what are they all doing out there? <laughs> but great man and he's every word that that the reverend said every word that people in the crowd said a fantastic guy i know it well when i first ran for office he was my opponent but it was a joke because there was no debate we agreed on we just agreed on life as a principal and taking care of people and he just he's forever uh, prior to that and after just never had a bad word for anybody about anybody. I love them, and I'm sure that everybody here felt the same way. With that, I put the hook away because I knew I wouldn't need it for good reverend, but I definitely don't need it for myself. Thank you all for being here. You heard the announcement on George's, and thank you all very much for being part of this ceremony, and we'll see you there.